Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video and today I'm going to start a new series because this month Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds will release their 18th studio album Wild God and to celebrate that I'm going to go through the entire catalog of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds albums. I'm going to kick it off with the first album of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds from her to eternity. And what a way to kick off this discography review series. Because this morning I walked into the city center of Amsterdam. I went to Concerto and I thought, I hope I might find three issues of some of these Bad Seeds albums. And the first thing I found was an original British pressing of this album. Um, in near mint minus condition i'll show you it's staggering so i had a very good final to base it on it cost only 30 bucks 30 bucks for a near near mint um original british pressing now i hear you thinking uh nick cave is an australian artist shouldn't an original pressing be from australia um well this was recorded in the uk so it's most likely that Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds listened to these stampers to um, to judge the quality of the vinyl. So this is the original. Now, I was doing some research and it was this Dutch reviewer who said that in the early work of Nick Cave, you can clearly hear the influence of the Einstotzner's Neubauten. That's a German band from the early 80s, which made experimental let's call it experimental avant-garde music which had certain thrashy or trashy elements in there but to call it influenced by Einstein and Neubauten is um, rather odd since looking at the cover the back cover this one this guy Blixa Bagelt that is the guitar player and vocalist from the Einstürzende Neubauten. There is Einstürzende Neubauten on this album. And this brings me to the first interesting element of this start of a new career, especially if you look at the later work of Nick Cave. This is much more experimental. The sound is much more daring, but it's real post-punk in its attitude. This is not just an angry teenager, though he is clearly an angry teenager. This is an angry, perhaps even dangerous, but intelligent teenager. This is one that grew up with art. He's one that grew up with challenging art. He is here to challenge you. Now, in an interview, Nick Cave said that somehow he doesn't fully understand, but um, in his early teenage years, he became reluctant. He started to um, he started to um, make name for himself within his family uh, because he had older brothers by doing illegal stuff by 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 by, by being uh, the bad boy of the family. Now, that element is clearly audible on this record. Though he's 27 years old here, you do hear anger, frustrated teenage dumb. Uh, somebody who, I mean, you can hear drugs in, in, in the voice, in the frustration, in the anger, in the, in the chaos. But and that's the most fascinating thing, because right now with the right hand of the red right hand files, Nick Cave has also grown to become one of those wise old, although let's say middle middle age because he's not he doesn't have the old attitude um man to come to to it for advice and that quality or that that the possibility of intelligence and wisdom is already here i mean i mean look into these eyes this is a gorgeous picture there is frustration there is longing but it's not blunt it's not dumb it isn't it is a lost soul, but it's a lost intelligent soul. And that 
defines for me this album. Opening with Avalanche, which is a very interesting choice because one of the big influences on Nick Cave is Leonard Cohen, and this Avalanche is a cover of that song. Now, the original by Leonard Cohen is dark, though enjoyable. This is dark and unenjoyable. Not that it's bad, far from bad, but it's much more like an art exhibit that gets you off your feet, that that that, that touches your nerve, than it's an, um, a relaxing listen to a deep, interesting voice. This avalanche is dangerous, and they mix the voice lower so that other music elements like drums can, can bang and, and take a hold of you. It's just fascinating, fascinating, really. Then you have a song like Well of Misery, which is a slave ballad. This, this guy's doing slave ballads, but in his unique own way, from her to eternity. On a certain level, an epic, a haunting epic. And, and the entire record has this haunting quality, unease, post-punk. And post-punk can go a lot of ways to become warmer, more romantic, yet yet there are punk elements there. This is darker, more frustrating, and the roots of the frustration, they go deeper. That to me marks from her to eternity. I love it. What a way to kick off a discography. So I'm curious, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, leave a comment below and I'm gonna do this almost daily August will be Nick Cave in the Bad Seats month and I'm gonna count down until the day of the release of Wild Dog so uh, I have never asked anyone to subscribe so I'm not gonna do it today but if you're interested please stay with me and, and, and look at the playlist see you later bye